Hey, okay, downloads. ETM patch 1.2. Here we go. Okay, so that's actually a good thing to point out. This game requires uh, patch 1.2 in order to speedrun it because the uh, 1.2 patch actually increases your driving speed a lot. <laughs> And by a lot, I mean a lot. <laughs> you'll just, you'll see later on. Okay, there we go. Exit setup. I'll know if it installed correctly or not in like two seconds. Stop, let me fucking resize, thank you. It deleted all of my fucking s Oh my god, I'm gonna be so pissed right now. Ugh, I don't wanna keep reloading the game and have to redo my settings every fucking time. Why is that occurring? I'm going to shit. Dude, it's fucking annoying, dude. And focus got changed. Okay, action is F. Whatever. Okay. Take two. ETM speedrunning guide. <laughs> Let's go. Start timing when you select Niobe. Mash escape down and enter to skip through loading zone saves. Kick right here. Break this window. Doesn't really matter. And just wait for this door to open. There's an alternate route that I will show you. Uh... It's the same, it's it's about three seconds slower. I'm gonna make saves. It's about three seconds slower to do the intended route, which is to uh, start the run. Oh, whoops. Apparently you can't reload the first level. I know that. No, I'm not gonna time it. This is just a tutorial. Okay, so. Oh, it's because I hit no. Uh, the intended route was to go over here, open this door, and jump up this ladder, and watch a really, really stupid long cutscene. It loads the same locker room showers, but instead you drop down this hole and have to sit here for an insane amount of time while you wait for the cutscene, and you end up right here. Okay, now that's the exact same as kicking that window, and waiting for the guard to open the door for you, and you end up right here. So instead of ending up there, you would end up over here. So it skips you having to sit through that cutscene, which saves about three seconds. So we run over here, and open this door. And the main goal now is to go to a button. You need to push this button in order to advance through the post office further. And it's very straightforward, you just follow my path, Just run through this area avoid killing enemies at all costs because killing enemies is actually really slow and you want to jump back here because it's faster than going all the way around the uh sorting booths kick this don't use a focus jump just kick it it's the same uh it's faster to not use focus at all so the less you use focus the better oh. and then you want to go back here again it's it's slightly faster to go back the exact way you came rather than going left like your your intuition is going to tell you go left instead of right but go right it's faster and then just basically follow my movement here Security. it's pretty straightforward just run past every guard because the way this game is programmed you don't have to kill many enemies in this in this playthrough you just have to get to the end of each level and hit the ending of the level. Okay, actually, I want to point out something here. There are two different types of uh, glitches in this game. Focus long jumping and focus high jumping. A focus high jump is pressing the focus button right before you press up and space bar. And you jump really far up. 
Now, you'll notice if you're right at the spawning point of this level, you can jump to the very top of the gate. And in the other aspect of it, focus long jumping, pressing spacebar, forward, and then focus, or er, forward, spacebar, and then focus, you jump incredibly far forward without touching the ground. A normal jump, you make it slightly, slightly less. Now, I am on a flat plane. If you jump off of a ledge and you're higher up than the surface next to you, you can go so far and you can you can go very high and this is actually used for a glitch later on called box skip you use a focus high jump to grab one of the ledges early it skips half of the level which is very useful now this level most people do incorrectly and I will show you the best way to do this level. Basically, what I'm going to do now is hold forward, jump through a gun, and press the 1 key. I'm going to press 1 while I'm in the air. This will switch my gun to the gun I'll need later, and that way I don't have to switch through the guns when my guns are out. So, just watch. I thought security had the elevator and, oop, I hit the wrong button. There we go. It's 2, sorry. And that switches to the SMG9. The, the SMG 9mm is going to be useful later on in the uh, got it level. Okay, and this is box skip. I'm going to clear all these guards so I can explain this easier. So, box skip. All you have to do is run to this box and press spacebar to climb it. And don't move. Press focus, up, and spacebar at the same time. And hold, uh, move the mouse, like pan the camera down. And you will grab an invisible ledge. Like you just saw me, like that ledge right there. Ledge detection in this game is really dumb. You may think a ledge is out of reach, but it's really not. All you have to do is grab the hitbox ledge, which is much, much smaller and much lower down than the actual ledge of any surface every ledge is much lower to the ground and that's box skip this is the hardest trick in the game <laughs> it really is most people can't do it it's it's a very tight window but once you figure out how to get it, it it's you can't fail it ever again but it's also the hardest trick in the game and another misconception people have is right here there's a cutscene trigger around the, the third white shadow down. Most people run straight forward towards it. It's actually faster to run towards this corner of the trigger right here and hit it right there. So run diagonally and hit the trigger. And here's another focus high jump where you get to the top of the fence. I failed it. So uh, when you're out, when you're about to this shadow, you're going to focus high jump and you'll get to the top of the fence and that saves seconds, like three seconds from climbing up the middle of the fence from a regular jump. We can take her now. Okay, now in this next level, got it. Again, mashing down, I hold down, enter, W, and escape all at the same time. You're going to want to equip the gun, skip the cutscene. You want to double tap, focus, and, uh, okay, that was really fast. And I'm going to, I have to break this down. So, when you grab the, the package here, you're going to get spawned right here after the cutscene. What you're going to want to do, you'll already have the gun out. You're going to double tap Q and left mouse at the same time, and it'll kill both guards. So the way this game works, when you have focus held down and you fire, it will instantly hit whatever enemy is closest to you. So if you fire, it'll hit the enemy closest to you. If you fire again, it won't hit the next enemy. So by releasing focus and pressing it again, you'll hit the next guard right next to the, the first guard. And then you'll just hit focus and fire focus, fo focus, focus, fire, fire at the same time, and kill all the guards in this room. And I'm gonna do that again in a second. I have to save. 
and you'll also notice you run faster with your gun holstered so if you can run with your gun holstered for the majority of the run only pull it out when you have to kill somebody and now it's rng you have to kill between 9 to 11 guards yes 9 11 and then the door opens Okay, so this would be a run over for me, because that's bad RNG. Okay, so that's run over for me. Because uh, that was not 11 guards. It was 12? Yeah, I had to kill 12 guards. So basically, that is an RNG factor that can kill runs. And you have to kill those guards to get this door to open. And it won't open without killing them. It sucks. We've tried skipping it. There's no way. Okay, now I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to run through it and tell you. I won't have my gun, op uh, my gun out here. Okay. So, you'll hold left on the mouse. Like, you'll drag left and pull the gun out. And then hold forward. Skip. QQ. Q, 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 and they're dead. And that's that's it. That's all you have to do. Just as soon as you f press Q, fire, and you'll kill the guard, and then release Q and hold Q and fire again, and you'll kill the next guard. That takes a little bit of practice, but that's a fast way to kill enemies. Four. Five. Six, seven. You'll always want to follow the same path I do. Eight, nine. Oop. Because it spawns the guards in a very particular manner. Oh, it's 11 again. Cool. It spawns them in a very specific way. Sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes this door just won't open after you kill 11 of them. It's really dumb, and it's RNG dependent as well, if the door just won't open and it's unlocked. So that's another way you can get tricked into thinking your run's dead. Okay, this one, there are two different ways to go. You can go down here and jump over the rail, and I jumped on it there just to, so I wouldn't fall down. Or you can go here and, well, I failed. It's really precise. You have to jump right before you fall, and you'll miss the rail and land on this thing. It's the same amount of time. It's a little bit faster to go from the top instead of the second floor. And you'll also notice here, I won't be using any focus, because you don't have to. Normally, pressing focus makes every enemy that's firing at you unlock from your hitbox. So, like, watch. They're hitting me. As soon as I hit focus, see how they're firing way the fuck away from me? Like, he'll miss me sitting right in front of me. See, it just went straight up. That's because if you're holding focus, they don't lock onto your, like, the center mass of your hitbox. It completely, it generates a random number between your hitbox and somewhere that's not your hitbox. And they could just completely miss by firing up, down, into the ground, to the left. So, it's a good idea in later stages to press the focus button rapidly. So that way the enemies will just not hit you, so you can just run through them. And if you mash Q, like you hear me mashing it, you could probably see me mashing it too. I can't see my OBS. Yeah, like if you mash it like that, you'll stay in real time, but you'll be in bullet time to the enemies in the game. So that way you can avoid getting hit. Like, see, I'm moving in real time, but I'm using focus. You can see it, and you can also... Uh, you can see my focus meter, and you can actually see the green... And you can also see guards just completely fucking missing me when I run past them. Like, they'll hit me every once in a while, but they will miss you more often than not. And that's a good way to... And if you're in bullet time for even a fraction of a second and you move around them, they will stay looking where you were before you entered bullet time. So you can use that as well to move around enemies that are tricky. Now... Here's where the driving uh, gets affected by the patch that you're running, which is 
Watch this. See how fast I'm going? If you load the PlayStation 2, Xbox, or GameCube version, you'll be going about an eighth of this speed. You go way faster than you're supposed to, and no one can figure it out. If you're Take good with computers, uh, examine the patch right and tell you. us what it's doing. I think it's your CPU clock speed. Because sometimes the car's wheels will also be square, and that has to do with your graphics hey, card, I think. Like, everybody else who runs this game has square wheels. I'm the only one who doesn't have square wheels. You're almost there. It's a graphics card the issue. Three. This level is very straightforward. You just follow my the way I'm going. You follow it. And as soon as you see this text box, you want to count two minutes. So I'm actually going to not start a timer. Uh, but you have to wait two whole minutes. And then the gate will open. There's a way to skip this gate by getting... You, you have to sit next to the gate. A cop will push you and get up underneath you. And then another cop has to ram that cop and you'll flip over the gate. But it's it's impossible to do in an RTA because like you have to rely on RNG from the cops. I'm blurry again. Oh no wait, your friend worked on this game? You should ask him why uh, the driving gets screwed up in the 1.2 patch then. That's cool, Blue Max. So I have no idea how long it'll take. This is the police. This is the police. Surrender. Surrender so we hide in this corner here because the guards AI usually, like right now they can see me really well. Like now I'm safe. As soon as they leave, you're fine. Hold on. I'm super blurred and I don't like it. But now, uh, yeah, they do nimble. You'll get screwed over a lot on this level because the guards will just ram into you and you'll flip over and fly into, like, the bank or something. I love the soundtrack in this game, too. Blame your friend for how awful the cop's RNG is. Also, you can't do this. Fun fact. You can do this in every version of this speed game. But the GameCube North... Uh, GameCube North. GameCube Nintendo. The GameCube version, if you kill too many of the guards next to you, it'll cause a stack overflow and crash your GameCube. Which I think is hilarious. Okay. This level... There are two ways to do this level, and Valiant North was considerably uh, good at the hard way to do it, and I don't think the hard way is faster. I think the intended path for this level is actually the fastest, but I'm gonna show you. Uh, I'm gonna show you the impossibly hard faster route. If it's faster, it's probably only about five seconds faster. And there are seven run killers in this in faster route over the intended route. So what you're going to want to do here. Normally, when you jump here. Oh, I jumped like at the exact time. When you jump normally, you you do a, a slow fall. Hold on, I'm going to reload so I can show you. You do a slow, a slow jumping fall. There it is. You do that. And that's really bad. So what you want to do. I accidentally did the thing you're supposed to do. You want to jump slightly before the air trigger. There's a trigger there that tells the game, oh, we're going to do a slow, cool falling thing because it's the Matrix and it's really cool. If you jump, like, right here, you'll be fine. And then the fast route, you go over here. Ugh. See, it's already slow. You have to jump. Okay. You have to jump right here, right before this second window pane. Ugh. You have to be on this thing, so. To get on here. And then you want to jump. You want to focus high jump. Oh my god. I, f I keep feeling. You want to focus high jump to this. And then focus long jump. And I died. <laughs> it's so hard. It's, it's very hard to do it. I'm going to show it off just because I want to show all the advanced strats off to people. 
Anyway, you want to go over here. I'm really bad at it because I've not done this in a while. And then it gets... You just climb up this ladder, and that's normal. And here is when the another fast rat, instead of running here to the ladder, it's faster to run over, well, jump over to this fence, and then jump up to the wall. And then when you're on the wall, jump up here, focus long jump over, focus long jump over, And when I focus long jump and then I tap the focus button, you'll move in real time, but you'll do a focus long jump still. And then you go over, you jump out of bounds here. See, this is where I think it makes it slower because you have to hold focus to get out of bounds here. And then you jump, you just focus long jump and you'll hit an invisible wall and then you'll land on this pillar. Or you'll just fucking miss and die. Okay. Okay, so anyway, uh... That was the end of the fast rat. You land on that pillar, and then you jump to the wall, and you climb up, and that skips you going through the construction site. Now I'm going to do it the intended way. So you'll climb up this ladder, and this is where Nick thought it was faster to go around and jump on the air conditioner and jump across the gap. But as I can tell, I've probably already beaten myself because I was in bullet time jumping across the gap. So if you're not in bullet time, you're always saving time if you're in bullet time for another strat. And you have to be in bullet time to land on the fence over there. Oh, shit. So, by not being in bullet time, I already saved time there. And it's probably faster to just go around instead of jumping up here. Just go around the fence. Because you have to be in bullet time for about three seconds here. And you can do that. <laughs> and you can die. So, here, here's the natural route, which is consistent. And probably about the same speed as the fast strat. So if you're learning this game, do this route that I'm doing right now. I didn't jump. What the fuck? That was weird. Okay, now I just want to go over here. Some people think you can jump on the inside of that ledge on the fence there. It's the same speed, and you can fall and die. So don't. Just go around the normal way. Down on the ground. You can play as Magoo if you have a skin for it. You can change the skins on the PC version. Also, that brings up a good point. Playing on the PC version is automatically 25 minutes faster than any other version of this game because the Xbox, the PlayStation 2, and the GameCube versions all have loading zones that are 10 seconds long by default. The PC version has no 10 second loading zones. All the loading zones in the other versions are animations just to like show off the matrix code and so you can read the level at the bottom. So for instance, when this level ends, there's a 10 second long cutscene for the level name. In the PC version, it's instant. I don't know why, but that makes the PC version the absolute fastest version of the game. So see that? There were two of them just now. There were two 10 second loading zones. And that one right there would have been 10 seconds right there. Instead, it's instant. So that was that's 30 seconds faster in three loading zones already. Crazy. And there are over 70 of them, so it adds up to like 25 minutes instantly. Please, don't, shoot me. don't kill anybody but the guy who says don't shoot me. This guy right here, kill him. And then turn on the button. This guy, if you don't kill him, will turn this button off. You need this button to be on because this activates belt 10. And then you run over to these stairs that say 10 on it. Huh. Now, don't grab these stun grenades unless you're going to do task strats. Focus spam to keep that door open. And then just run over to belt 10 right here. And that's the fastest way to get through to belt 10. Uh, Nimble do does a weird uh, 
route. That's the intended route for the speed run to, uh, to get to belt 10. So just copy what I did there. Now, this level is very annoying because there are steam vents. You can see that there's a steam vent right there. That, that thing right there, they will shoot it. And if you're anywhere near it when it blows up, you die. So the way to avoid death, this pipe that's right here, as soon as your character hits it, stop for a fraction of a second and then go forward again. And I will, I will demonstrate. Stop and then go. And you won't die. And for this one, you can just run past and hope the shotgun doesn't hit it. If the shotgun hits it, you'll die. And the run's over. It sucks. And then spam a focus jump will make you go all the way to the bottom of that stairwell right there without having to run down the stairs or being caught in the, the air in focus. And jump upstairs because you move faster when you're jumping upstairs. And it also despawns the guards that are there and here. Sometimes the one in the hallway will be there, and it's really stupid and annoying. But if you jump upstairs, it'll despawn the guards. This this level's very straightforward. You just run and don't die. Oh, okay, yeah. Don't don't run up belt nine and jump to ten. You want to go upstairs. It's faster. And try and stay in the middle of the uh, pillars here. And always go to the right of the furnaces, because it'll put you in perfect, in the perfect angle for the next section. Always go to the right of the furnaces. I'm not calling out Nimble, I'm teaching him how to play this game. Like, he's basically the reason I'm making this tutorial, because he's the only one who's learning at the moment. But this, this guide will help future runners as well. Okay, don't ever hold down here. When you're climbing up ladders and you're trying to hold down to spam like no and escape, you'll start sliding you'll start sliding down the ladder as you're saying no. And if you hit the ground before you say no, you'll soft lock and Niobe will get off the ladder and she'll just be running around while the save screen is up. So She'll be sitting there thinking, why can't I go anywhere? And you can't find the ladder again because the hitbox isn't there for you to climb back up the ladder and hit the trigger again because you've already hit the trigger. So don't hold down here. Wait for the no option to show up and then press no. Then hold down and press no or you will you can soft lock here. But yeah, sorry, I wasn't calling out anybody. He's just the only guy who runs it. I've done it like 600 times. It's really easy because you, you spam down and escape and enter to to skip the no or to skip the save dialogue you should speed run this one Vicio. this game is fun okay and you basically want to just use acute angles so if you see the staircase in the distance you'll notice wherever i need to go i'm gonna go back and do it um wherever i need to go like when i'm rounding a corner I will immediately line up with where I need to go and just hold forward. This is hold forward the speed game. You just want to hold forward to your ob objective. And this is a Valiant North strat. You basically, you hold uh, right, forward, uh, left, forward, right, back, left, jump, forward, right, jump, back, left, jump, forward, right, jump. And it, it keeps your camera angle locked. And it, jumping up the stairs, like I said earlier, is fast the fastest way to get upstairs. But instead of going like moving your mouse in a circle, you can just keep your mouse still. And see, it's really it's really smooth, except for when I fail it. And you can get up the stairs really fast just by keeping your mouse stationary like that and maneuvering left and right with jumps. Oh, don't jump off. Now, here is another box skip. This is box skip number two. You basically want to mash spacebar to jump and hit the corner of the box right here. And you'll skip over the climbing animation of the second box. I got it that time. I'm going to do it and fail it. See that climbing animation? It's really slow. See? And you, if you do it correctly... That's another, that's the slowest possible. But if you do it correctly, it saves half a second. And it just, it just looks cool and you can get hyped about it. 
I can't do it anymore now. I got I got too happy that I got it first try. Okay, there we go. Now, here is a very hard strat, and I'm going to do it just because it it saves a lot of time. As soon as you press the open button, you're gonna move your mouse to about that angle, hold forward, jump, and focus immediately like like that. Like I hit W, then forward, then focus. Like that. And you'll see why in a second. So as soon as you're right here, you'll land in the box. You don't have to go around and climb down the ladder. Like you'll land immediately in the box in this uh, can in this elevator thing. And that's the fast strat. The slow strat is to get out and go around and climb down the ladder and it's like 10 seconds slower. So just do this. Oh, and I, sometimes you'll do that, but that's fine. Okay, now as soon as you press the button to go down, you're gonna press it and then immediately jump out. And you'll, you won't die when you hit that wing. If you jump out of the thing before you hit the button and you hit the plane, you'll die. So you have to hit the button and start moving and then you can jump out of the box and roll off the wing. And sometimes you'll hit the wing and roll off onto the ground and that saves another second. It's called the double. It's called a, a double roll. Now this part sucks because you can't see. But you just have to navigate blind. Don't go back and get the sniper rifle at the uh, back of the level. Just memorize this path and just run it. And those snipers are hitting me very accurately. Snipers can kill you really fast in this uh, area. Okay. So, this is catching a plane. This is the worst level in the speedrun because there's a very fast strat. Now, remember when I said the stun grenades in belt 10 area? Uh, up the stairs to go to belt 10, there's two uh, a pack of stun grenades. If you're going to do vector skip, you need to pick them up. If not, don't pick them up and just run straight for the ladder off in the distance. If you're doing vector skip, you have to do this. Oh, shit. I forgot that it's... Hmm. So I failed it. Vector skip. You have to throw a stun grenade right here. And then another one right here. And then focus jump onto the first one and let the second one hit you way far up in the air. I died. But it's the same thing. Uh, so you're going to want to throw a stun grenade here. And then a... Oh. Basically, you throw a stun grenade at this line right here. But you have to start throwing it as you're running. So this white splotch is where I aim for. And I didn't... <laughs> the window for throwing the second grenade is very precise. So I always throw it too early. It's, it, it's right here. And jump on top of it. And then the second grenade throws you way up into the ceiling. And what this does is this allows you... Oh, I didn't unlock from the falling animation. Wow. Okay, so that was bad. It's supposed to unlock you from the falling animation so that you can maneuver in the air at a huge distance. So I need to kill myself and reload the level. And if you die and reload the level, you get all your shit back. So... Ah, too early again. Shit. This is why this skip is not used in many runs. Okay, and this should unlock me. There we go. Okay, so I got unlocked from the falling animation. Which means I can just hold forward... And get on this platform. Now, you're not supposed to be able to get onto this platform. So when you run towards Vector, there's a cutscene that plays when you get off the ladder. But instead of that cutscene playing, you can just open the door. Or you can just jump past Vector, rather. I fucked up. But you can just immediately go past Vector. Now, here's what happens when you do the level normally. I'm going to show you what happens when you do the level normally. This only saves 10 to 12 seconds if performed perfectly because you're in the air for so long. 
if we could figure out a way to get up onto that platform with one grenade and it's not TAS only, you can do it with one grenade, but the angle is perfect and the uh, explosion is perfect. You have to be on top of it at the perfect time. It's TAS only. But uh, when you when you get to the top of this ladder, there's this cutscene right here that plays. And then you can go over and open the door and go. So that's what Vector Skip is doing. It's skipping that cutscene and running all the way down to the end of the level. And uh, climbing the ladders. Climbing the ladders is the slowest part of non-Vector Skip. Okay, this should work. Yeah. Okay, this will work. Nope, this is gonna fail. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> Another cool thing about vector skips, uh, like the, the super jump with the grenades, is you can fly all the way up to the ceiling, and when you hit the ground, you don't die. Now, if you fall more than like the height of this square right here, the game kills you because it thinks you've fallen too far. But with this glitch, you can go as high as you want, and the game doesn't think you're anywhere near as high as you are. Whoa. Okay, that's actually the perfect height, but I was too far away from the wall. Uh, I think I might have just had a breakthrough during this guide. I'll have to figure out spread patterns of the grenades. Uh, but that's vector skip, and it's insanely hard. Because the grenades have to blow up within four frames of each other, and you can't throw it too late. Like, that. That was perfect. And you can have full range of mobility while in the air, which is something that you shouldn't be able to do if you're being exploded by a grenade. The second grenade unlocks you from that animation and gives you a uh, full range of mobility. So see, that's vector skip. Now here, it's another one. Uh, it's, it's an initial position. As soon as you press F, just jump forward. Now, you're going to hit the trigger no matter what. Even if you die, you'll still hit the trigger. And this brings us to agent on board. This is the worst. Agent Smith is an asshole. And you can sometimes kill Axel... Axel is right here. He's tied up. You can sometimes kill him through this little hole in the wall right here. There's a little gap. And you can sometimes kill him accidentally by killing one of the guards next to him. And you want it you want the MP5 here. And you do that same tactic where you're you're mashing Q and left mouse button. And you want to grab the parachute. And here's where you can kill Axel. Hold on, I'm gonna try and kill him just to show you. I've had runs die because I've accidentally killed Axel. <laughs> you can accidentally kill him, so be careful. That's why you want to. That's why you want to pump focus and left mouse button because that will ensure you hit only the guards in front of you. See, that bullet was going for Axel, but it went way up into the ceiling because I was using focus. And when you have focus held down and you shoot a good guy, it'll always never hit the good guy. Like, I can show you right now. See how it goes? Oh, well. I was, I was aiming too close. <laughs> Where I was at earlier, it would not have hit Axel because you're too far away. That was a bad example. Whoops. Okay. This is the fun part. Agent Smith. V and Smith in chat. If you have a Franker face. V and Smith. Uh, so now. A cutscene's gonna happen. You're gonna hit Q or escape to cancel it. I have Q for focus. So I'm gonna hold Q. Run towards the button. Let go of focus. Press the action button which is f for me you can't see it and then immediately hold down focus during the entire action that way that agent smith can't make it to me by the time i'm done pressing the button to lower the back door to the airplane and it looks like this
Okay. Now, when it's going down, you're going to want to run here and just let him hit you until the door is halfway open and then hold focus and run against it to land behind him. And then you're going to want to kick him by pressing right mouse button so he's on the ground and then you want to kick him until he flies into the trigger. Now, here you're going to hold focus and the op the opposite direction away from him. So if he's on your left side, you want to hold the right, you want to hold D so that you're aiming away from him and then just mash punch, mash right button. You'll do an uppercut. And as soon as he's in the air, you uppercut him again and then focus kick him. He'll uppercut him, she'll uppercut him twice and then he'll be you'll kick him in the middle of the second uppercut animation and he'll fall out of the back of the plane and it looks like this i'm gonna fuck it up because i paused but okay hold on ah so i i fucked it up so i'm gonna i'm just gonna do it all in one swift motion so you can see what it looks like in action but that's the fastest way to get agent smith out of the plane because if you don't do it that way, he will fuck you up with RNG. It's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He is the, he is the most... Agents are the most RNG enemy in this entire game. Okay. Here we go. He'll hit you, that's fine. <sighs> okay, that angle was really bad, so I'm going to do it again from here. There we go. Uppercut, uppercut, kick. Oh, I fell out! Shit. Okay, so that's that's a that's a bad way of demonstrating the strat. You just you have to get used to it in practice. If I was in a run, my stress level would have been higher and I would have executed better. But I'm casually showing off speedrun strats, so I'm not I'm not into it as much as I should be probably. But that's basically what it looks like. My camera also didn't lock on to the fight like it was supposed to at the beginning, so I had to like push him against the wall and uppercut him and fail it once. And if he kicks you before you push the button, just keep holding focus and press the button. You'll be fine. Okay, this should be good. No, my camera unlocked from him. Okay. Okay, that fucking works. I mean, if that works for you, getting this far up onto the plane will normally cause the plane to shake again. So I just got really lucky there, but I explained the the consistent strat, and you can use you can go for yellow strats like that, I guess. But don't trust the strat that I just did there, because being that far up on the plane can sometimes make it shake when Agent Smith gets that far up onto the plane. I don't know why, but the plane will shake you back into the plane. It doesn't it doesn't want you to lure the agent to the edge and then go behind him and kick him off. That's why it'll shake you back into the plane. Okay, now when you get to this light, you can just jump onto the light and it skips a couple of feet of running. Okay, climb, thank you. Now, here's a thing, here's a hint for, uh, for guns. When you're jumping here, you're gonna wanna jump to this ladder. Take your gun out while you're jumping and you'll fucking die. Uh, take your gun out while you're jumping, and then you'll hit the ladder, and the gun will be put away. But you'll take the gun out immediately after you're done climbing up the ladder. So you don't waste time taking your gun out and running with it and running slower. But you can still have the gun out in the air, touch the ladder, the gun will just be gone. Like here, I'll show you here. So instead of pulling your gun out and running slow, like see how she sways? When you have the gun holstered, she'll run fast. So jump, gun ladder the gun's gone so when you when you get off the ladder it's immediately back 
So that's just a good way to have your gun out when you need it immediately getting off of a ladder. You only need it here. Because you need to kill three of the guards to get the sniper rifle for later. Okay. There we go. I jumped too early because I was trying to explain the glitch while I was doing it, and that's a bad idea. Because explaining stuff and talking while trying to do strats is dumb. Okay, so, oops. <laughs> you kill him, and now you have the sniper rifle. And you don't have to kill these guys, because as soon as you run to right here, Ballard will fuck them up with his shotgun off camera. See? As soon as you run far enough, he will fuck everything up with his shotgun. So don't kill the enemies that are attacking Ballard. He'll be fine. So, now you want to jump up onto this rail. Oops. Jump over to the ladder. Take out the sniper rifle. So that way it's automatically out when you get up to the top of the ladder. And sometimes he will kill these guys for you. Yeah. See, he just hit the... He killed that guy before I could even get to him. Okay, so they're all dead. I just want to make sure they're dead. Like, in a speedrun, I would have just gone for it. But anyway, now, this is Ballard Skip. Normally, you're supposed to run all the way over to the left and go down the center platform and go around the outside arena to Ballard, who is at the phone booth right there. Instead, there's a pillar right here that is just in bounds. So if you get on this railing right over by the first light here, you can actually just fall down. So as soon as you see this light, you can pretty much, you can see the pillar below me. You can just turn and drop down. You won't fall off, you won't die, and it skips the entire second half of the level. And that's Ballard Skip. There was an original Ballard Skip where you would... Uh, you would, do, you would go over to the phone booth first, and then jump back over, climb up the ladder, and kill the guards, and you teleport back to the phone booth afterwards. But this is just faster and more consistent, because you, you have to climb up the ladder once. So by climbing up the ladder, then killing the guards, and then jumping over to the pillar, it, it's the faster version of Ballard Skip. Oh my god, DK, thank you for the host, man. This is a cool game raid. Holy crap. <laughs> okay. Now this part, you're going to hold up. Phone? You want to stand right in front of the phone. Ugh. Focus. Uh? Oh, okay. He didn't spawn. If you hold focus before you press 3, you will automatically lock on the guard. And then this one, you kill him. Press 4, hold right, and press F all at the same time. I did it really slow there. I'm going to show you what it looks like when you do it fast. Why the hell do they have a... Oh, whoa. Uh, please? See? That's, that's what it looks like. That's how you do that level the fastest. I noticed some, most people will like run over here so they can get a better angle above and to the like the first guy. But if you stand right here, you can hit all four of them and then be right next to the phone's hitbox to like mash F and start the next level. And then you can run about three feet and throw the grenade and switch to the shotgun and then run. So like initial position strats in this game are very important. Yeah, that's the fast strat, Nimble. That's the fast strat. And now, uh, this part is really fun. I, I noticed you were killing them. Oh, my game froze. I noticed you were killing everybody in this area. You can just, if you focus jump them, they will fall over. And then you can just run right past them. And here, I also notice most people will take the, uh, the, the normal route through here. Instead, I want you to look for a gasoline barrel on the ground. And there's a, a, a ledge to the right of it. You can just make it to that ledge by jumping. This gasoline barrel right here. You can just jump up here. And he hit me right as I was climbing. 
and then jump over to the steam. Once you see the steam, jump back over. When you're in the ground, shotgun, and then focus shots and kill them. So that's that's the fast strat for this room as well. I'm going to let it kill me. Kill me, please. Their aim sucks on easy. So I'm going to do this room one more time just to show you the fast strat. And it's called barrel skip. Because we used to jump up onto that barrel to get to the ledge, but then I figured out, hey, we can just jump up to that ledge without the barrel. And as soon as you see steam, you can start going towards the uh, other uh, exit. Oops, I did it again. I'm focused long jumping instead of high jumping. Ooh. Oh, wow, that didn't kill me. That's supposed to kill me. Uh, Okay. You're going to kill me now. Stop running away, pussy. Yeah, they still have better aim than stormtroopers for sure. Wow, okay. He just ran away from me like a little girl. Okay. One last try of doing fast strats and not being an idiot. Explaining stuff and doing them at the same time is really hard. But yeah, focus jumping always knocks enemies over. It's just like a shotgun. And shotguns will be important later on, but we won't get that far ahead. Let's just say shotguns will knock over any enemy. Oh my god. It's it's harder than it looks, I guess. Okay. I didn't realize it was that precise. But anyway, during that falling animation, you want to just kill both of these guards. I didn't do it right there, but... When you jump down, you'll have a falling animation. If you press, if you pull out the gun while you're falling, when you're doing the getting back up animation, just kill both of the guards in this hallway so that you can run through faster to get to the end of the level. Oh, uh, I fucked up there. If you if you go as fast as possible, you'll grab the ledge. You just have to tap down, and you'll be facing this way immediately. So let me do that. Let me show you what it looks like. I lied for doing this one more time. We're already halfway through the speedrun. <laughs> what do you guys think so far, by the way? A lot more technical than uh, at first glance. There we go. And that's the fast strat for this. And then tap down, and you'll be facing this direction. And then when you get to right here, focus jump over. Oh, and you'll do that. Uh, you're skipping the first bookshelf. Oh my god, what? There we go. You're skipping that first bookshelf climb. Then you want to kill this guy, because he's really annoying. Jump up here. Hit this switch. And now... During this cutscene, hold a, hold a and mash jump and then uh, swivel the mouse to the left. Oh, I'm, I failed, but sometimes you can you can get a skip where you just jump up to this ledge. You'll clip up. Ah, I'm not going to worry about it. But if you just mash jump and hold right or left, you will sometimes just jump up and clip up onto it. I'm definitely making this a video so that other people can watch and learn how to speedrun this game. Okay. Flank him at the rear. This level, <laughs> flank him at the rear is like iconic for the speed run. Uh, you're just going to run straight forward, uh, jump up here. Anywhere is fine. And then. So awesome. Holy crap. Oh, my game is in front of my sub alert. Alert. E alert. <laughs> Thank you, Opario, for, like, way too many months of subscribing. Holy crap, I can't move it. Oh, wait, I have to right-click. Duh. Dude, Opario, thank you very much. 11 years, that's so long. Okay, we're good. Anyway. Uh, and this cutscene will refill your health. And then you can just run over here. You'll never die in this area because your your health regenerates. 
Knock these guards out of the way. Climb up this ladder. And don't even worry about your health. Even if you're down to like 20%, you won't die. And then you want to kill these three. Believe it or not. And keep your gun out, actually. It's, it's, a, it's a short distance. And... This took me forever in a casual playthrough, but all you have to do is shoot the three things blocking this piece, uh, right here. Kill that guy if you want to. And then you can just jump over here and wait. And that's all you have to do for Ice and Corrupt. I didn't know that. I would sit here for hours just throwing grenades, and it would eventually blow those things up for me, and I just didn't know what was happening. But that's all you gotta do. Here... There are two guards you can skip if you mash upright and jump. See, I, I failed it. I keep failing it, but you can just skip around them and you don't even have to kill them. Yeah, I'm going to play Colot uh, drunk after this tutorial. Okay, here's a fun strap. Poor SWAT guys, they were like, we're ready, we can do this. Right here, if you just focus long jump across... And then hold back. You skip the entire stair climbing cuts uh, sequence. And here, it's actually mandatory that you get this uh, sh shotgun or whatever it is. With the, the flashlight on it. Or else you won't be able to get past. There's a, there's a giant wall that you can't get past. And if you keep your gun out. Uh, oh, I put the gun away somehow. If you keep your gun out when you climb that ladder, you'll have your gun out when you start this, uh, when you climb up the ladder there. Okay, right here, you're going to focus long jump into this grenade thing, and you'll be at the very end of the, uh, tunnel during that cutscene, which is, like, slightly faster. And when you get to a right about here, you want to throw a grenade. And it'll kill them all. Wait, my grenade's angle was off. So, normally they would all die, but my angle was off. I threw the grenade too early. So, and then all you have to do is get right here and then leave. As soon as you get up out of the sewers, you'll see Worm's hitbox just despawned. If his, if his health stayed and I ran away, you would game over because you failed to protect Worm. But if you get out of the trench and just run away, his hitbox goes away and his health goes away so you don't have to save worm you can just let him die for all we know anyway here is a very important part to have a shotgun and you'll want to focus pump here just shoot them with the shotgun and they'll all fall over or that and if you need health there's a health pack but if you shoot them with a shotgun they will all fall over and you can just run past them without taking much damage and then switch to the m16 you're going to want to do a focus long jump before that. Uh, there's a jump here that you, you do the really slow gliding across the animation. Uh, if you focus long jump before that, you'll still clear the gap, but you won't have to do the cutscene where those guards are shooting at you. And jump to the left here. So that you're going this way around the water walk. Don't go down into the water walk. Just keep running around the outside on the left. And that guard will just fall down there. For some reason, he always does. And that that's the fastest way to get through that area. Uh, don't worry about jumping down the stairs here. It's not that fast. Anyway. That's pretty much it for this level. My game froze again. Right there. Don't kill anybody. Just jump and slide down the ladder. Now, there's a shortcut here. Most people don't know this, but if you just focus jump you can just curve around and just land on top of this thing right here and fall down it's 27 seconds faster to do that than to do the room normally so that's a decent chunk of your run that you can save time on nimble just by doing that and here you can kill these guys or you can just focus jump them and run around them <laughs> it's faster that way now breathing room straightforward just Follow the light, like you're going to heaven. <laughs> Follow the light, and when you get to here, there's a cutscene that plays normally, and I'll show you what it looks like. And you get blown back, and the bridge gets collapsed, so you can't go that way, so you have to go back the other direction. Now, if you just go in, 
if you go into the breathing room, if you do a focused long jump into that where the cutscene's at, you'll skip getting blown back. And that saves at least three seconds because that animation. And you can just immediately go over to the hole and fall down and fail falling down the hole. And that saves at least three seconds. Oh shit, I can't see anything. I need to adjust the gamma on my gameplay so I can see. And there here's a gr he can throw a grenade that will land somewhere in here and it could it could kill you. It sucks if it kills you. Now, you can jump across these middle platforms and skip the uh, enemies. And it's a little faster than running around them. Good night, Dr. House. High jump through them. It's important to note that you can't make this jump without holding focus. So hold focus there when you jump or you won't make it. And you also don't regenerate health when you're falling. So right here, it's important to just hold focus down and just make sure all the enemies die. Because you will be killed at that point. You won't have enough health to stay alive. Uh, I'm going to die. Okay, cool. <laughs> You'll never have enough health to uh, make it through here. Now, this is Malachi and Bane. And most people will do this room the normal way. And you have to climb around and go through the entire level and kill enemies and jump down. And no, you can just do this. This red pathway here, once you get to the end of that platform where you're supposed to climb up, just jump to the distance. Just jump to that thing. Hold on, I'm going to point at it with my gun. Jump towards this wall right here. And once you touch the wall, the game resets your height. So that, uh, normally, if you just jump off, if you just jump off this platform down here, the game will kill you because you fall too far. Hi. I see you down there. Uh, the game thinks you fell too far, so you'll die. Uh, <laughs> die. Uh, so if you hit the wall... The game resets your fall height, and you can just hit the ground and not die. And it looks like this. Whoops, I'm dying. Boop. And you won't die. And that skips the entire level, by the way. It skips the entire level, so you don't have to do any of it. And here you want at least 80 health. Because you're not going to want to kill any of these guys. You're just going to want to run straight through and focus pump. When you when you think you're in trouble, focus pump and just run through. The least amount of time you spend in there, the better. And then pull your gun out right before the cutscene. That way you can have it as soon as you're done climbing the ladder. And that's sewers. That's pretty much sewers in a nutshell. Oh, I have one bullet. Okay, so this is bad. Uh, I don't have any sniper rifle ammo either, I'm pretty sure. So you want to go over into the middle platform and then zoom in with the gun and kill your guys. Malachi, I'll cover you. Okay, I have 11 sniper bullets. This is bad. Oh shit. It's a pattern, so you just have to memorize the pattern. That should be it. What? Oh. Well done. He didn't he didn't die. Okay, that was it, but he didn't die. So that's 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 sewers. Now, the fun levels. Shadow! Shadow is fun. The Chateau is fun in general. This is the only speedrunnable version. I explained earlier, but the GameCube, the Xbox One, and the PlayStation 2 is 25 minutes slower just because of loading times. Loading times are much, much, much slower. And that's the end of that level. Now it's time to fight Jackie Chan and all of his Jackie Chan friends. These enemies behave very strange. If you hit them more than twice, they will fall down. Who knows why? So, 
The fastest way to kill them is to make sure they do not fall down. So the way to do that is hold focus and slowly tap punch. You want to punch them three separate times, don't combo them, and then let go focus and stab them in the heart with the stake, and it looks like this. Oh, he didn't die. He, I, the first one wasn't a punch, so. This just ensures they won't fall down, because if they fall down, it's a very, very slow animation for them to get back up. There we go. That's what it's supposed to look like. Now, for boss enemies like Vlad, you just have to hold focus and mash punch. And I'm not kidding. Hold the direction towards him and mash punch. As soon as he falls down, it's over for him. He will not get back up. He cannot get back up. And you will deal insane damage to him when he's in the air. If, he's, if you hit him while he's in the air, you do triple damage. So this fight's probably over by now. And he will always stop you uh, when the fight's over. He'll, st he'll use a stake on you. Okay, this fight's definitely over. Like, look at that insane stun lock. He's pro The fight was probably over long ago, but I he was stunned. Yeah, see, I stunned him too much. So there's such thing as too many hits. Because he, he couldn't get back up in order to do the, the stopping your stake from hitting him in the heart maneuver. What's that noise? And you just want to run to the end of this level. And remember how he said he has other important business to attend to? Yeah. You just run through that little area, and it's this room. You go fight him in this room now. Huh. Kill these two guys with the crossbow. And then just mash A. It's helpful to get him stuck in the bookcases there. Yeah, you can do that. If if you get him in the air and you hit him in the air, look at all the damage I'm doing while he's in the air. See all that massive damage that's being done to him? And he's dead already. Like, if you hit him in the air, you just crush him. And that's the boss. Like, that's a boss. And he's just down immediately. Now, here's a very weird and interesting thing. Going through this right door... And then saving in this elevator. In a speedrun, you don't save. But if you save in this elevator, you get two crossbow bolts. I know I have zero right there, but you're not supposed to have the crossbow at all. Once you use once you use the ammo, you throw the crossbow down on the ground. This brings it back for some reason. By saving in the elevator, you get the crossbow. When you open the Merovingian's office, you get one or two crossbow bolts. This one you want to kick down to the ground and just mash A until he falls again and then you want to do the three tap because wolverine here uh is rng dependent and that's just the fastest way to do it now see i got one bolt sometimes you'll get two so you want to kill this one guy killing him is the nece the necessity to opening this door <laughs> that was pretty boss you want to jump down here jump right back up Kill this guy by doing the three tap once again three punches don't make him fall over it's really slow and then you just go down here and that's the end of the level pretty simple this level is obnoxiously short you run around this corner run around this corner and the level's over the next level if you blink you're gonna miss this level okay are you ready and it's over that was the level. I'm not kidding you. That's called the hall. And the hall is less than a second long. This is my favorite level in Chateau because it involves one cycling Cujo. Cujo is a lot harder to one cycle than Vlad. Okay, see, I knocked him over. And he takes forever to get back up. That's square ass, too. What the fuck? Okay. Vlad is annoying. So the second you start this fight, you can't injure him for a while. So just mash until he falls over. There we go. 
And now you want to hold, just spam. Spam punches. You don't want him to get back up. He's gonna get back up. Fuck. Fuck, 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 Okay, please. Fuck! Okay, I just failed one cycle. I want to do it and show it off. I want to show off one cycle. Oh shit, I'm hacking. I'm hacking! Don't want to hack. I want to show one cycle. It's really hard to do. And if you can do a one cycle Cujo, you're pretty good at this speed game. Die now? No. <laughs> it's not even a show off -y thing. I, I need to show people what the one cycle looks like for the guide, too. <laughs> What's up, Mark? This ends here. Not bad. Oh, you're doing uppercuts when you mash the direction opposite of him. That's why you feel like it's easier that way. Like, see, watch. Uppercuts are good, I guess. Yeah. And then do the kick, maybe. Oops. Okay. I was too busy trying to kick him. No, Animita. There's no 100% category. There's all levels, but this speedrun, and I, I don't want to spoil it, but I, I this speedrun doesn't do all of the levels, and I want to I want to get to that later on. I'm almost there. Hang out until after power plant, and all shall be revealed. Wow, he didn't die after the three. Niobe is about 30 minutes faster than Ghost in the speed in the PC version as well. It's about an hour faster in the GameCube and PS2, Xbox version. <laughs> Ghost has a lot more enemies to kill. And Ghost also has, I think, 15 escort missions where you have to keep Niobe alive or somebody else alive. And you have to snipe from above. It's Ghosts is a really weird run. And the enemies hit harder. I swear, they hit harder. Okay, come on, come on. Try this. Okay, fuck it. You know what to look for. It's super hard, one cycling Cujo. It's the hardest trick in the game other than box skip. Because when you fail it, a ghost is a category. It's its own category. This is Niobe. It's not even really any percent. This is just Niobe. Niobe any percent is the name of this category. Like if you see the splits, it says any percent Niobe. Because Ghost has his own uh, category. Oh, you think Ghost is hard mode, Nimble? Run Ghost hard. Ghost on hard difficulty is very hard. That's also a category that I want to add to the leaderboards, but no one's done runs of it, so... Okay, he's dead now. And failing one cycle loses a minute and a half, almost. My eyes. My eyes. They took my eyes. And apparently they took that guy's eyes. Yeah, this game's combat looks very weird. It's also manipulatable. Manipulated. Manipulable? <laughs> Fuck that word. It's easy to manipulate because it's so goofy looking. Okay, these guys, you want to stand in front of a cell and wait for them to start attacking you and then get behind them. And that way they get caught by the prisoners. It's the easiest way I can think of to to make sure that they get, they get captured. That's the fastest way to make them get caught. 
Just stand in front of a prisoner. When they start hitting you, move around them and push them into the prisoner. And then the prisoner should grab them. If they don't grab them, stay in front of the uh, Cain and Abel. And then they will... The guard... It gives the prisoner more time to grab the guard that way. That way they don't get out of the, the guard... Or the prisoner's reach. And that's that level. This level... This level sucks. This is Twins in Pursuit. Can you hear me? It's... It involves driving. And the fast strat is to not bonk on pillars or cars. It's very, very involved and very focus intensive. So I won't be talking. I'll just do it and you can observe. <laughs> Ghost, shut the front door. Whew, shit. Oh my god, shit. 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 <laughs> it's so hard, dude. Okay, this part, holding sideways, ensures that no enemies or cars will be in the way. I was on the wall there, that's why it fucked up. But it, as long as you're going straight forward, holding right will despawn cars in front of you. I'm doing poorly right now. Luckily, that's the end of the level, though. <laughs> and guess what? More driving! Yeah! I'm listening to their frequency, their yeah, when you play as Ghost in this level, you bonk into literally every pillar because well, Naomi can't drive for shit. Make that agents close by. So this run uh, for Ghost can be killed very easily by Niobe's bad driving because she's random as well. She's an AI. So this level is straightforward. Just go fast and don't get hit, don't die, and don't stop moving forward and get those agents off her ass. Now, in the final level of the... In the final sequence of Freeway, you want to catch up to Morpheus on the semi who's fighting, I think it's Agent Thomas. It's not Smith at that point in the second movie. And then Neo swoops in and rescues Morpheus off the, the semi truck. You're moving so fast by that point that you just hit the semi truck immediately as the level starts. You don't have to do this, the, the eight minute long chase. If you remember playing this game casually, there's an eight minute long chase sequence that you have to do to catch up to the, the truck that Morpheus is on. No. In the PC version, you immediately run past it and trigger the start of the reactor foundation. Also, the agents will never hit you as long as you don't look back because they don't spawn. Like, they don't actually know that they're chasing you until you look back at them and then they'll start firing at you and catching up to you. But as soon as you stop looking at them, they just go away. It's so silly. Like, the agent's not there anymore. They aren't there. They're not going to attack me. I'm safe. The only thing I have to worry about is the cops now. The first level is pretty much enemyless, and Sparks is my favorite character. And cops move super fast in this level and then the next level, it's just insane. So you're not prepared for this, but it's it's really fast now. And don't hold forward for a few a fraction of a second, and then hold forward. That way that they the cops don't like fuck you up and knock you over. Like that. You better hurry, you're running out of time. And this is just PC driving in a nutshell. And you shoot the same speed that they're moving so that you hit them fast. So they'll die really fast and you won't even know why. Ah, I'm doing horribly with RNG right now. Okay, there's the semi. Bam! You just run into it. Instead of chasing you, you just fucking run into it. <laughs> it's so crazy. I don't even know why that happens, but I found out on accident one day. And all the other runners were like, How are you doing that? And we, we, we isolated it to being the 1.2 patch of the game. Pretty much follow what I do. Jump over this wall, it saves a little bit of time. You can skip that first ladder by just jumping straight towards the second ladder. And you'll grab the wall. Focus high jump so you don't have to climb up the start of the ladder.
probably looked over during porting, but it started with the 1.2 patch. This, the 1.7 patch fixes it. So it's only the 1.2 patch in the game, which you can only get from MatrixSpeedruns.com. Okay, now this part of this level, you're normally supposed to sit here and wait for this light to disappear, and if you walk out here, you die. There's a death trigger, and you'll just die. And it takes 48 seconds for Ghost to shoot out that light. And when he shoots the light out, the game uh, gets rid of the trigger uh, on the ground that you walk over that kills you if the light is on. So to get around that, all you have to do is jump in the air over that trigger on the ground. It just jump over it and you'll be okay. It saves a, almost a full minute just by jumping over a trigger. It's ridiculous. Run the GameCube version. I ran the GameCube version when I first started this game. It requires a disc swap. That was weird. Uh, it requires a disc change, so I put that in my splits. <laughs> and it requires a disc swap at the very end of the game, so you only have to play f about 15 minutes of the game with the second disc. And you just jump over that trigger. It's right there. So I just jumped over it. And I went really slow there. You can go much faster than that. And then you can just jump over this gap falling down now here you're gonna want to jump to this pillar right here hold right and jump over and that skips the entire level that skips the entire level because now you can just run over here <laughs> instead of doing the entire level and again don't save saving is slow it's not that slow, but it adds up to like two seconds in the entire run. Okay. Here you can die. They can kill you really easy. Yeah, see, I just died because he knocked me off the ladder. What an asshole. So saving right there might be good because you spawn here instead of at the beginning of the other part of the level. <laughs> So you might want to save there, actually, if you want to not die there. But if I die, the run's over anyway, so it doesn't matter to me. But for newer runners, it'll be not that bad. So what I like to do is just mash focus while you climb. And you'll climb at normal speed, but they won't fuck you up. And that's how you get past them without dying. Now there's a way to get over to those snipers over there, and it's really fun because you go really far out of bounds and the camera can't quite follow you, but it's completely useless, so I don't do it in a run. It's just funny that you can get over there without being able, without being supposed to. You're not supposed to get over there, but you can. This level is pretty straightforward, just follow my movements. When you get to right here, you're supposed to wind your way through this maze, but if you run towards that plank that I'm running towards, you can just jump up here. They didn't intend for you to do this, but you can just jump up here and skip going throughout the maze. You can just... I don't know why they did that. So silly. Without being supposed to. Shut up. Making fun of my words. I'm trying to think and speed run at the same time. It's awful. I don't have a script. I'm just going off... I'm going off tilt. Like, I'm going off script, dude. Okay, I'm gonna try this. This is the first Out of Bounds ever found in the game. Pretty much, I'm just gonna hold focus. This is slow. You are you don't want to do this in a run, but... If you hold focus... And go for this door... If you open it before this guard can open it for you... Ah, you're supposed to be able to clip through here and fall out of bounds, but I, I failed. So, instead of doing that, you just you go to the right side and run straight. Don't use focus at all. And you're going to want to go over. You're going to want to go up top there and get the chlorobromomethane gun. Which is super important for the next level. Now, my game crashes there. If I just hit enter, it reloads the game just fine. 
So if your game crashes there like mine does, yeah. Good luck. So you want the chlorobromo methane gun. And you just want to focus pump your way over to this opening. As long as you can make it to this area before you die, you're fine. So this level, you just basically want to stay alive. Do it however it makes you comfortable. I don't have the, the gun. There it is. Do it however it makes you comfortable. What I do is I'll kill these two. I keep the gun out. I'll kill this guy. Oh, he didn't die. Cool. Uh, kill this guy. And kill these two. And you want to make sure you got the shotgun. The shotgun's dropped by the third guy. Use the shotgun whenever you're low on health and you want to go fast. Because you can use the shotgun and just bowl down enemies. Because you don't, you don't regen health when you're in the air or being hit. So as long as you're flat on the ground and you're using the shotgun to knock them down, you'll regen health. So for right now, I'm fine. I don't need to use the shotgun right now. I'm going to focus pump around these guys. But let's say let's say they hit me and I got really low there. I could use the shotgun here to just run around and okay, I'm really low health now, so this is actually good. You just use it to knock everything over. And it might not necessarily kill them, but it'll it'll delay them. It'll knock them over enough to where you can refill most of your health. And if you feel like it, just stop. If it makes you comfortable, just stop moving until you regen some health and then keep going. It's only going to cost a few seconds and you won't die completely. You won't you won't die and have to reload the level. And that that's faster than dying. <laughs> Not having to reload the level is faster than dying. It's using your brain. Jump as little as possible here so you regen as much health as possible. And that guy has a gun that can kill you in three hits, so always focus pump around him. Stay away from that guy, because he is mean. And that's the level. I didn't kill very many enemies, so I did good. Uh... Now, depending on how much health you have, you have to have more than 60 health for this strat. If you have more than 60 health, this is what you do for this room. Base, sniper one in position. You jump down here. Oops. You're supposed to long jump. I'm sorry. Focus long jump. Down to this. Oop. That was weird. Focus long jump down to this thing. Okay. And then focus long jump over here. See? That's why you need more than 60 health. Because I had 80 and I only have 23 here. So you take 50 damage hitting that vent. And then you take the rest of it RNG heavy by getting hit by those guys. So the backup strat if you don't have 60 health is to fall. Is to go this way. And then do that. And then there's a ladder that you have to climb up. And then you drop down here. And that's the backup strat if you don't have enough health. It's a lot slower. It's a lot slower. But that's, that's the backup. Jump through this glass. You don't have to break that glass. You can just jump through it, which I thought was cool. And then run for this door. You're almost to the end of the reactor now. So that's cool. You're almost done with the speed game too. Now, once you hit this cutscene, you're going to get your health regen to 100. No matter what. So if you're there, I've been there at 23 health before. Now you just want to focus. You want to hold focus a little bit around the booths to slow down their shots even more. But for the most part, you can just pump focus. Like, see, as long as you get down, you can get down to like 10. As long as you make it to that door, you're fine. Okay, now there's a fast strat here. It's really hard to pull off, but if you... As soon as you climb up the ladder, you can just do a high jump, a focus high jump, and you'll skip the ladder climbing animation. Like, that was perfect. That was perfect. And then you just jump over this computer. Not like that. Like that. And fall down here. And then you focus long jump over... I jumped too early there, but you just jump over to this ladder... And then go down. 
Okay, we're almost... After the power plant is when the uh, all levels distinction comes into play. But this room right here is really fun to optimize. I just hold left and mash the mouse to the right. Uh, and then you're going to want to jump right here. You want to jump over to that middle platform over there. And this saves a lot of time going around the outside. And then you just jump before the ladder. And you don't climb down the ladder. And this room is absolutely useless. You just run up the center. Like, the game designer is intended for you to go all the way around. And SWAT people will drop down and you fight them. But you can just run through the center of it. And not fight them. It's really dumb that they would do that. Holy crap. But yeah, as long as you jump before you hit the ladder... Oh god, that guy screwed me. You will jump down without climbing. And here, you can... Uh, as soon as you hit this angle on the rail, just jump onto it and fall down to skip the climbing down the stairs. And that's pretty much it. The This is a level right here, by the way. It's just the cutscene. Now here, the core. There are several ways to do this. You can run straight and jump and go around this pillar and you'll make it I didn't know that initial position works and that skips climbing around this entire arena it saves three minutes it's the biggest skip in the game you can also jump onto the rail which is harder you jump right here and then you do the same jump and this is just a more consistent way to get the strat see how much I cleared it by the safest way to do it, uh, it skips 12 minutes of gameplay nimble. The safest way to do it is to get over here, get on this rail, and jump over here, and then start angling this way. It's the most consistent way to set up the rail strats, but the easiest by far, the not the easiest, the fastest by far is to just jump. And see, I just hit the railing, so I'm probably not going to make it now. I could still make this, actually. No. Okay. The fastest by far is to jump at the exact point where you don't hit the railing when you're in the air. So, like, right there, that would have not, that wouldn't have made it. It's really precise, but it's the fastest way to do it. Like that. Now that's going to make it. Maybe. Yeah. See, it barely makes it. So just play around with it. Find out what you like. I I used to do the over there strat. Now I just do this strat. Because it's the most consistent for me to hit all the time. And if you grab that ledge, that's not the end of the world. It only loses like a second. And you're at the end of the level. Like From the beginning of the level, you can just jump across to the end of the level. And save three minutes. With a little bit of practice, you'll get that down really fast. And that's the end of the reactor. You just run run through this hole. When you fall down, you're going to turn around and run to the elevator. And I want to show off a cool out-of-bounds glitch that's useless. Don't do this in runs. It will kill your run. But uh, if you hold forward when you get into the lift here, holding forward will knock you out of bounds. Uh, please? Okay. So it didn't knock me out of bounds. Whatever. You you grab a ledge and fall down. I won't show it off then. Okay, that's it. Now, here's the coolest part of the game. It's Seraph's Tea House. Now, normally, you're supposed to beat Seraph, and he'll be like, Okay, I will take you to the Oracle. And after you meet with the Oracle, after the cutscene, Agent Smith comes in and we're like, oh fuck, we gotta go. And you go through the skyscraper escape, the vertigo level. Uh, you have to run through the city and avoid Agent Smith in like four different levels. And then you have to go to the church and answer the hard line at the top of the church. And if you do this, just spam F like you're taking out a gun and he will attack you. Or no, it's E, sorry. Spam E, like you're taking out your gun. And he'll just attack you in the corner until you die. And if you lose to Seraph... I am sorry, but the Oracle was mistaken. You cannot help us. He kicks you out and is like, you can't help us do shit. And you jack out of the Matrix 
into the end of the game. So you skip 12 minutes of gameplay by just losing to Seraph. Now, there's a cool out-of-bounds strat here as well. I don't remember how to do it. Fuck. But uh, maybe it's this one. Yep, it's this one right here. Okay. So when you start shaking like that, you just turn around and back into it. And you'll eventually pop out out of bounds, but... It's really useless. I just wanted to show it because it's cool. Um, but once you're out of bounds, you have to stick really close to the... Uh... Ah, fuck. Okay, wow, I just shot forward, so screw that. Uh, you have to stick really close to this uh, level or you'll glitch out and the whole game will turn black. And this is a very boring part of the run because there's literally nothing to do you just fly through these pipes like you don't even need to kill these things really they won't kill you on easy you don't even have to kill any of them and that's the most pathetic killing animation ever They're squiddies. They're sentinels. They are designed to hunt down humans in the real world. They're squids. Here, I'll let, I'll let one suck up to the, the screen so you can see it. Come here, buddies. They stay exactly away from you, by the way. There they are. Squiddies. And the level after this is the worst level in the game in terms of design. It's the grossest, ugliest piece of shit in video game history. And there are two ways to do it. The fast way and the slow way. The slow way is my preferred route because you don't have to deal with flying through this gross level. What you do is you turn around and you fly towards the uh, wrong end of the level. Like the, the game designers got lazy and they just put this fucking pyramid here. Uh, so you turn around and you back up into it. And it'll just fucking zoink out of the map. Hold on. There we go. You'll just boop. Mm. You'll just get out of the map. And it avoids going through the tunnels that you can see in front of you. This is the grossest level ever because you can bonk into the wall everywhere. So it loses 30 seconds getting out of bounds here. So the optimal strat for a speedrun is to just go through the level normally. Because they all, all paths lead to the same uh, ending of the level. And it doesn't lose time going a different way. No blindfold for ETM because it would be impossible. But yeah, you... uh. You just fly through... Oh, and see, look at that. That's one of the benefits of doing it the legitimate way. I just softlocked the game, and it's over. I just softlocked the game because it un it unloaded the level because I got too far away from the tunnel. So now it's it's done. That would have been run over. The squids are actually tied to your HUD, not the game itself. Not the level itself, rather. So yeah, that was it. I just softlocked. And, uh... So I'm just going to go through it normally just to show you how awful this level is.
But even though it's awful, it's faster than going out of bounds. Like, look how shitty this level is. It's so awkward to fly through. Like, can you even tell what's going on? Legitimately. Nope, uh, there have been six runners total. Ah, I got lost. Fuck. However, the world record is actually really, really optimized and hard to beat. I haven't been able to beat it in over a year. <laughs> But yeah, this level takes three minutes um, and three seconds. Like, maximum three minutes and three seconds. Even, like, the worst players can beat this level in, like, four minutes. And there are three tunnels. There are three long descents. So after the... Th after the three... My game froze. After the three descents, you know that the level is over. Okay, here's the first long descent right here. And it's followed by a cutscene. Or preempted by a cutscene, rather. Oh no, it's the second one. Ooh. Okay, I'm getting lost. Look at that. This level is just awful. Oh, that sucks, Nimble. But yeah, this is the, there it was preempted. This is the worst level design ever. And the game designers should be ashamed of themselves for making this. Music's pretty hype though. Yeah, it gives everyone a headache because this level is terrible. Okay, first long descent. Yeah, you probably can't even see this level on low quality. It's just a giant blob. A blur of gray. Because it's a 480p game. Don't worry, we're almost done. Bam. Bam. That's it. That's Enter the Matrix for you. So this has been a fun tutorial. Thank you, everybody, who stuck around to watch it. I just realized it's 4.30 in the morning. And I should probably go to bed. But yeah, I hope this helps anybody who wants to learn this game. Mr. Anderson, welcome back. <sighs> Hopefully it helped Nimble the most, because he's the one who's learning it right now. He fights for us. That's a full in-depth explanation of the game, so if you have any more questions about it, feel free to message me on Twitch. <laughs> Okay, here's the deal. Since it's 